Hey YouTube, I uh, wanted to put together a quick video on three essential tools if you're going to be doing any electrical work on your home that I think you should have around. Uh, I'm a homeowner, I'm not an electrician, uh, but I have to do all the electrical work on my home because I can't afford an electrician. So three of the tools that I purchased specifically for all the work that I have to do are the following. Uh, the first is a multimeter. I think everybody should own a multimeter uh, for their home uh, for the sole purpose of checking uh, for voltage, checking for uh, continuity, and uh, checking for resistance of uh, wires and so forth. That's primarily what you're going to be using it for around the house. This particular unit is a, a Fluke 117. Um, it's a very good multimeter, but you certainly don't need uh, one of these. You can uh, purchase any number of them. And uh, any of them that have these functions. And the uh, big function that I like about this is it's um, an auto ranging. So that means like if I hit under voltage, it's going to be under auto. So it's going to allow for an automatic a range as far as uh, the voltage is concerned. You don't have to set it like some of the other manual or all the manual meters. Let me give you a quick example. This is a meter I had before. It's actually a God, it's got to be over 15 years old. It's one of those Harbor Freight ones, but it still works. And the reason if you're wondering why I just didn't use this one is because with a continuity test here on this uh, particular meter. It doesn't have any audible signal. So you don't know. You have to be looking at this meter to see if there's any continuity between um, point A and point B. Uh, whereas with this fluke, it gives you like 99% of the other meters out there. It gives you an audible beep uh, that tells you, you know, when you have this, uh, when you have this set up to continuity, It'll give you an audible beep. And what I needed to do was stretch out between six to eight feet. And I couldn't look at the meter. I couldn't hold the meter in one hand and look at it. So this wasn't going to work for me. The other uh, two reasons why I didn't use this meter uh, for the work is because, one, it's fused, but it's fused with a very... It's a very lightweight fuse. It's not heavy duty like this and by fused I mean if something goes wrong uh, All the meters are, are uh, set up to blow a fuse before they blow up in your hand and This fuse is really one of those glass fuses and They may work they may break you just never know um, So I didn't want to trust the kind of voltage that's going through my house uh, to be working on it with something like this. Uh, the other big reason is because these leads are very short. And like I said, I needed to go between 6 and 8 feet. So I opted for something better and I went with a fluke. But uh, there are many meters out there. And uh, one thing I will mention regarding uh, meters in general is that more so than a meter, I think you're better off spending your money on quality leads these probes right here have a lead line uh, that's like 50 plus inches so they're long and they also have uh, features that allow for them to flex many many times without wearing and breaking they have silicone wire um, these particular ones seem to retract with a threading at the end which I put some clamps um, you can see they're at the end of the multimeter there's some clamps little jaw clamps that I screw on there and that's very helpful as well but the others that don't have this threading still can accept clamps that you just push over it but uh, you're better off getting quality leads because these are what's in your hand not the meter and uh, quality leads with um, a moderately priced meter is far better than a high priced meter with shitty leads I'm sorry poor leads uh, you want good leads, and uh, that would be preferable, in my opinion, uh, over spending a lot of money on just 
a meter. However, most good meters come with good leads, typically speaking. But if you already have one and you have maybe some substandard leads, maybe pick up some good leads and, and you'll be much safer, much better off. Anyhow, so multimeter is the first tool. The second tool is a non-contact voltage tester. Here's another one by Fluke, and the reason I bought this one is because it just feels good in the hand. It feels like a good quality tool. I'll show you where this works really quick. Here's a receptacle before you write me about, hey, that's upside down. I like them like that. And the reason I do is because, see this cord? It's a heavy-duty cord, and it's less likely to dip this way than with ground up rather than ground down. Anyhow. That's just my personal preference. But the way this works is you stick it into the hot. See how close I can get? It doesn't even go off. You stick it into the hot, which is the shorter of the two prongs. It goes off and tells you that this is a live, a live circuit. There's a electricity voltage going through there. You stick it through the neutral. Nothing. Ground. Nothing. The hot. Yeah. And what's good about this is it also does wires that are coming out. So if you want to test a wire, for example, you can put it on here and think, okay, there's no power going through there. But this is so good, this uh, non-contact tester, that it tells you what side the hot, the hot is on. So you can go to this side. It doesn't go off. Go to that side, it goes off. Let me just contrast that with another another one that I have. This is a Gardner Bender. It's uh that fluke was like 25 bucks. This one's like eight bucks. Still good, but you can see how sensitive this is. And by sensitive I mean it goes off. Look at the distance that it is. I mean I'm two inches at least away from this wire, and that's why it's going off. If I pull the cord out of the wall I can get maybe an inch to an inch about an inch and a half away from the receptacle so what the problem with this is if you're trying to actually diagnose a specific line or receptacle you can't even get so close to it to find out well is it this one or this one or which one is giving me a problem so that's why I opted for this fluke because it shows you with accuracy, you know, which side uh, on, a, on a wire, which side is hot, which side is neutral, that's your neutral side over there. So, but these are very important because every time you work on your electrical system at home, you want to turn off a breaker. Like if I was working on this receptacle, I'd go and shut off the breaker. But you want to use tools like this to make certain that there's nothing there so you don't shock yourself. It's pretty self-explanatory. You don't need a tool like, like that. Non-contact. It's not essential, but they're cheap enough even if you go with that one to find out. Yeah, there's hot. But if you wanted to get something, this is even cheaper with like five bucks. And this basically is, you just shove this into the wall. And you can tell if that lights up. It's a little probe. It tells you this is hot. This receptacle, or this, uh, yeah, this receptacle has juice going through it. So you better shut off the breaker. And either of those types of tools work. Finally, last piece of equipment that I bought. This is very, very helpful. Is this? Uh, this is a ground and outlet tester. And what this does, I don't know if you can read that, let's see if I can focus that. It basically diagnoses what's wrong with your receptacle according to the color code that you see here on the right. It tells you what's going on with the color code on the left. And the way that it works is plug it into your receptacle. These happen to be wired correctly, so I'm going to see the center green. If it wasn't wired correctly or if there was an issue, then it would color code differently than the green. And then you would see here on your chart 
what's going on with it and basically this gives you a nice starting point of how to fix it what to look for or what to address when you're trying to fix it and I think these are very important even if you're uh, just going around your house just to see if they're uh, wired properly I mean this is probably one of the tools that every homeowner should own and again you don't need this is like 20 bucks it's a spice berry it's a stop shock you don't need something like that because they make these and these are five dollars I think I don't know if that'll focus but you can see it kind of gives you the same that's not focused but it, trust me it does give you the same kind of uh, coating it's a shitty camera um, and it does do the same thing plugged it into the wall and this particular tester two orange lights indicate that it's correct anything else would indicate the color code as follows and you would follow the color code to determine what's best how to fix your problem this button here is to trip your GFCI and then reset it just test whether the uh, GFCI is good but anyhow these are just three tools that I think every homeowner should own um, you know if you go with a setup that I had bought uh, it's about $250 that's a lot of money to spend but like I said you don't need to spend that kind of money because if you take these tools which essentially do the same thing with the exception that I would get uh, higher quality leads if I had to use this type of multimeter uh, even if you bought a $20 set of, of uh, good leads all these combined would be about forty dollars and that's including the twenty dollars you're gonna spend because if you just bought these by themselves it would be twenty bucks if you couple the leads for another twenty it'd be about forty dollars so depending on what your budget is but ultimately if you're a homeowner you know spending two hundred fifty dollars is not that big of a deal if you're gonna have to be doing that work yourself and uh, it will save you a lot of headache it will ensure uh, at, at the best that you have some safety as opposed to using substandard kind of equipment uh, but it also will give you a heads up as to th what are what's wrong with things and also um, give you a good diagnostic tools as to guide you as to what you should be doing as far as repair work goes so hopefully this was helpful if you have any questions uh, please let me know take care